Hey everybody, I'm going to share some thoughts and ideas from an article that I came across and I don't want to do PowerPoint because I'm just letting us take a break from PowerPoint, but it's about self-talk and it's especially important right now during a pandemic when we find ourselves alone or working remotely or navigating multiple boundaries like home, work, and school all at once. And sometimes we just need a chance to regroup and think and manage our thoughts, which can be positive, negative, or neutral, right? And we have to have a place to land those. Normally we could land a lot of our experiences, feelings, and thoughts with others. But as we find ourselves in more limited circumstances, this isn't always possible. So this is a tool that a lot of career coaches use is to develop routines of positive self-talk. Now don't get too carried away into thinking, oh my goodness, she's gonna make me look in a mirror and do something that Stuart Smalley from Saturday Night Live used to do, which is, you know, saying, you know, doggone it, people like you. I'm smart. I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. That's not what we're talking about. It doesn't have to be that corny or, or cliche, right? There are a lot of things that can be very deliberate and personal that can really serve as boosters to your confidence and motivators to helping you get after a task. Because especially as we're navigating these weird boundaries that don't exist anymore, it's very easy to get off track and pulled in a lot of different directions and really deviate from that to-do list and more forcefully our goals. So um, when we talk about self-talk, I'm going to be glancing up here at a second screen so I can kind of keep myself focused on some of the talking points I wanted to mention. Um, so whether you call it working from home or living at work or living in your office, Again, working remotely, which doesn't seem like it's going away anytime soon, might be some of where we're at, or at least a good portion of our work is going to be done remotely, right? And I don't know about you, but some people get a little worn out of streaming video meetings, regardless of the platform. These meetings often struggle to capture things like crosstalk or interjections, interruptions. Uh, they don't fully let you kind of scan a room for reactions or facial expressions. They don't re really allow for much of a sidebar. You could use a private chat with somebody, but again, it's kind of hard to have that conversation um, where you might just whisper or ask a question to someone sitting next to you physically in a room. So there are all these different kind of awkward places that we find ourselves in with, with video streamed meetings and interviews. So um, self-talk can kind of help us land some of these things that we might normally get to do through natural social feedback and interaction. Um, basically, self-talk is an inner voice which provides a running monologue of your thoughts and feelings during your day. It can be very conscious thoughts of what's going on in front of you now, or it can be unconscious thoughts or, or uh, beliefs and even things like biases or stereotypes that kind of run through the back of your mind. But in other words, it's basically the story in your head. Um, and it's basically your own narrative that can be positive or negative. And of course the positive narrative can really boost your confidence and increase your overall effectiveness of what you're actually doing. So I'm sure many of you have heard about, um, you know, performance athletes using, um, you know, this positive visualization, right? Seeing themselves make the free throw, um, seeing themselves get the gold medal or whatever it is. It's not a far cry from what we're talking about. You can do that in your own efforts and your own work too. And there is very strong research to support this kind of work. So if you think of self-talk as a tool and not something cheesy and corny from Saturday Night Live, then you're going to probably get something out of it. So um, essentially we have a couple types of self-talk. You have instructional that you talk through a task. So it might be that you're actually narrating what you're doing at the moment to keep your focus and concentration. So let's say you lost your keys and you just kind of are working through the task. Keys, keys, keys. Where are my keys? Where are my keys? So that's self-talk, right? And so you're kind of trying to laser your focus as if you're trying to solve a problem, right? We also have motivational self-talk, which we can do kind of in the moment, often to increase our effort and to recognize negative thoughts and overcome them with positive thoughts. So think of it as yourself exercising and finishing your last lap on a run. You're almost done, a few more minutes, a few more steps. You, you got this, you, you know, keep going, keep going because you're feeling fatigued, you're feeling overwhelmed, and your body is trying to counter that. Um, obviously, that's a really good thing, but we don't stop and recognize it all the time, but we're just gonna be more even, you know, more deliberate about it, where we get way ahead of it, not just waiting for those moments where we really need it, but actually going in front of it 
as well. So essentially, the self-talk we're talking about is really affecting how you feel and how you behave. And uh, if you think about it as a tool, it's, again, going to make talking to yourself out loud not feel so touchy-feely and weird. A lot of things that happen when people think of self-talk is they're like, I don't do that. That's what crazy people do. No, not so much. We talk to ourselves all the time. It's just that we don't do it in front of others or we're maybe worried about how we are perceived if it were caught doing it in front of others. Because, yeah, it looks a little strange. And sometimes our private thoughts need to remain private um, and we want that privacy. So everyone has at least a few moments throughout their day where they have total privacy. And that's a good time to maybe kind of gather your thoughts, take a breather and do some positive self-talk. Um, if you need to step outside or put yourself in another room, do that. Find a place for some privacy so you can get over the uh, fear or insecurity of, of having someone overhear you. Um, another thing that you want to think about, too, is um, making sure that your self-talk doesn't annoy coworkers or family members or classmates or people that you're spending time around because it could be very disruptive to their focus and their concentration. So just finding the proper time is kind of half the battle. But again, you self-talk all the time. So do I. It's just kind of being deliberate, right? Let's be, let's actually use it more effectively. So um, these are a few ideas for developing your self-talk routine. You can have reminders on your phone to say kind of, hey, time to talk to yourself. You know, or maybe, it, maybe it's part of your morning where you're sorting through the news of the day or the projects you're going to conquer or your to-do list. Morning is a great way to do some self-talk because it can also help wake us up. Um, but some people are like, nope, I'm not alert enough to do self-talk in the morning. I really have to do it at lunch. Or it's really better for me to kind of finish all my thoughts right before bed. Um, it helps me finish and close out my day. Or maybe right after work or at dinner. So find the time that you can sit and do your self-talk, but make it a regular time. Um, if you don't know what to say or how to get started because you kind of feel weird doing it, um, here are a few suggestions. So you can name people you care about that are dependent on you in some way. And you can start out like this. Say their name. I'm going to work for you today. I'm going to be my very best for you today. Right? So um, especially during a time where we're pulled in so many directions and we can get distracted easily and lose focus on what we need to get done, making a firm out loud commitment to people who depend on you can kind of be a strong reinforcer to, to making that commitment even stronger of what you're going to accomplish today. Um, and that really does help um, you attend your tasks a little bit better. Um, another thing you can do is call out yourself by name. And this is one maybe you could do during a lunch break. You can say, hey, Tiffany, time to get back to work, um, where you're kind of reprimanding yourself a little bit, but it's really a matter of refocusing. So um, sometimes when you're taking a lunch break or any kind of break, when you're working from home or doing school from home, it feels like you're kind of falling down a rabbit hole and it diverts your attention away from important tasks. Um, and, uh, and it can, even though there are other things you're doing, sometimes you have lots of projects you start, but very few that you finish. Um, and we get constantly interrupted in these spaces that are now work, home, and school, right? So uh, managing those interruptions and trying to get focused again can be really challenging. So um, returning your concentration back to the task at hand, like your work or your school can be difficult, but if you summon yourself by name and say, hey, time to get back to work, um, then you can kind of relieve some of that stress where you're like, yeah, I got to call myself out. And you can kind of laugh about it if you need to. Um, and, uh, but sometimes again, hearing ourselves called by name is kind of like we're referring to ourselves in a second or a third person voice. Um, and we call it self-distancing, like stepping back and saying, what am I doing? How am I spending my time? Is this really a good idea right now? It's kind of like how we feel when we give a friend some advice about their problems because we're not directly troubled by their burden and we can think a little more clearly. There's the same kind of chemical affects going on in your brain where you're stepping away and providing some distance so that you can use your logic center a little bit more. Okay, sometimes you need someone else, even that, even if that someone else is you, to kind of call you out and say, hey, it's time to get back to work. Um, last one I'll mention is something uh, we call schedule shutdown complete. So um, sometimes you need a shutdown ritual to know when to unplug, because actually we found in the last 12 months that people are actually working more 
than they are supposed to because they can literally start and stop almost at any time. Um, and there really is nothing to separate work and home. So sometimes we have to do physical rituals like changing our clothes, getting ready for the day, uh, changing back into comfortable clothes when we're done with our work. Um, but for people who engage in self-talk, you kind of need a saying like time to reboot, schedule shutdown complete, or call it a day or nope, all done. You know, so I mean, it sounds again, kind of juvenile, but it's important to help us kind of box and compartmentalize that part of our work is now complete. Um, and then it also tells us to not chase any of those thoughts that are work or school related because they need to be finished. And so you don't find yourself with racing thoughts or lingering thoughts about stuff you didn't finish or get done because that can really create stress and distraction from other things you should be spending your time on right now, like, like family um, or, or like rest or peace or calm that you're really needing um, as part of your day that's just as important as the work part of your day. So um, one little trick that I use um, with my daughter is, um, you know, she's not convinced that she needs to sleep and all children want to stay up, right? They want to spend more time with you. They don't want to go to bed on time and they sometimes put up a fuss or kick back or, you know, push against going to bed on time. And so finally, I kind of leveled with my daughter and I said, you know what's, um, do you know what cell regeneration is? And she's like, what? And I said, this is the time for your body to shut down and do cell regeneration because the little cells in our bodies that do so many functions get worn out and some of them kind of break down and die and need to be regenerated. And uh, one of the only times that we get to do that as a physical being is while we're resting. It's kind of like you need all other systems to be down or in sleep mode so that that other creation can happen. And that's why we feel things like fatigue when we don't get enough sleep, because now your body is having to do two things at once. It's having to, to do all its functions normally, plus the cell regeneration. And that is really sapping your energy. And it's also a way for your body to say, hey, slow down. You're making me do too much. So I need to slow you down to make you sit or make you rest or make you stop because I can't keep up at this pace. So think of fatigue as your body's cue of saying enough's enough, time to get some rest or the sleep you got last night was not restful. And I always encourage um, students and, and clients and people I work with to develop a good sleep routine to make sure that they are really getting restful sleep because we've all had a, a night where we didn't sleep very well and it just takes over the whole next day. Um, Think of, of schedule shutdown complete, like punching your time clock and uh, kind of like putting your day away. You're, you're done. Um, it's hard for some of us to do that because we, we kind of think all the time about things that we've worked on. But again, having a way to say, nope, I'm done with that. And it's time to really put that away can be a part of a healthy balance between your work and life, especially when it's so blended. So those are just a few ideas about how to put some self-talk into your life. Um, one thing I remember when I was really young is, is I would say the goal I'm after and say, I am going to achieve this goal in a healthy and positive way. And I'd say that over and over and over to myself. And I, I actually got those goals. Um, and I'd say it regularly and people say, you know, write it down, tape it to a mirror because a goal is not a goal until you write it down and make a commitment to it. So otherwise it's a wish, it's a desire, but it doesn't have any focus and it doesn't have any plan. And it also doesn't get revisited regularly, which you need to do to kind of keep yourself after it. So again, self-talk um, is gonna be important to keep yourself going, especially with all the uncertainty and, and craziness going on and unpredictability. So hopefully you found self-talk uh, a little bit more inviting and a tool that you're willing to visit and try um, and just own it. Own the fact that we all talk to ourselves. Just do a little bit more of it and make it more focused and make it work for you. Um, hopefully you found this helpful and we'll see you next time.